Hello there, my name is Verizzi Wright. And I'm Simon Wright. <laughs> and welcome to... Phoenix Wright. Ace Attorney. This game is the reason that Simon and I are friends. I mean, I'm not saying that we wouldn't have become friends otherwise, but it was a huge reason why we became friends. Yeah, I mean, it's speaking of games that made us friends, like DDR was the reason I spoke to you, because I heard you talking to our other friend at the time, Amanda. Dance, well, not dance, at the time, revolution. but I heard you guys talking about DDR while we were all at work. Mm -hmm. I was like, I need to somehow find a way to talk to these people because I know absolutely zero people here and they're talking about DDR. Yep. And then we became friends and Phoenix Wright was one of the things that we had in common, like largely. And uh, everything just kind of took off from there. So side quest has Phoenix Wright, you know, big way to thank. Yep. Phoenix Wright and Disneyland. Those mm -hmm. are the two things. And DDR. Well, yeah, and DDR. But we're going to go ahead and jump in. Our plan is to have uh, Simon do the voices of any boys in the game, and I'll do the voices of any girls in the game. Don't expect any uh, spectacular voice acting. Not great at it, but we're going to do our best. Yeah. Um, Although, I mean, your judge is pretty impeccable. I do a pretty good judge. I can still take on the judge if you like. Yeah. Um, and then uh, there will most likely be walkthroughs happening because there is so much that happens in this game that is so hard and even having played it multiple times before i still get stuck man so. i remember like when we were at disneyland we, i was playing with the third one mm -hmm. when we were at disneyland and i would have to like write like look up a walkthrough write down the steps write down <laughs> the steps and then like so that i could take them with me so that while i was playing on my breaks at work if i got stuck because I'd already forget them from writing them down. Yeah. But, and I, like, some of them have no context. Like, what the fuck does this, I'm just writing it. I don't know what the fuck it means. Right. And so, like, I'd have to, like, okay, now I'm stuck while I'm at work and, like, look them up. And if I happen to play through more than I read, I was like, well, I'm fucked. I can't play until I get home. Exactly. Yeah, it can be tough sometimes, but it's worth it. So and, here we go. Well, and there was no phone internet. Yeah, At phone internet point. wasn't really a thing. At least not. I mean, like, people were still using sidekicks. Extreme. As, like, I had a sidekick. I know. I thought your phone was, like, super high tech. <laughs> I was had a jealous. keyboard. <laughs> the first turnabout. Well, that makes us sound so old. Uh, we yeah, are old. Sidekick? That was some great technology. It, I, I am old. I mean, so am I. You're only two years older than me. Mm -hmm. Barely. That's really, really red blood. It's really fresh. <laughs> this is you. Well, uh, it's like, nobody knows who it is yet. I guess I'm that's true. Plus, I, you can't control the speed on it. No, that's true. Kim? Like who? Like that patsy. I like its suit color. Kind of an off red, pink ish. It's definitely pink. August 3rd, 1947, a 19 1947 a.m. 1947 a.m. <laughs> it's like in a military time, but that still wouldn't be a.m. then. <laughs> uh, district Court, Defendant Lobby Number Two. Boy, am I nervous. Right. Oh, hi, Chief. Whew. I'm glad I made it on time. Well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. Not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. It says a lot about you and your client as well. Um, thanks. Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? You mean you knew the defendant before this case? Yes. Actually, I kind of owe my current job to him. He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. I want to help him out any way I can. I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I don't know what voice to do for Larry. <laughs> Anything. It's over. My life, everything, it's all over. <laughs> Isn't that your client screaming over there? Yeah, that's him. Death, despair, oh! <laughs> I'm gonna do it! I'm gonna die! It sounds like he wants to die. Um, yeah. <sighs> <laughs> Nick! 
Hey. Hey there, Larry. Dude, I'm so guilty. Tell them I'm guilty. <laughs> That's a good sign. <laughs> yeah. Give me that death sentence. I ain't afraid to die. <laughs> what? <laughs> What's wrong, Larry? Oh, it's all over. I... I'm finished. Finished. I can't live in a world without her. I can't. Who... Who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? Aw, oh, Nick, you gotta tell me. Who took my baby away? <laughs> oh my god, calm down. Hmm. The person responsible for your girlfriend's death? The newspapers say it was you. Yikes. My name is Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. My first case is a fairly simple one. I guess I can also be Pain, since there's not a lot of girls in the first episode. Yeah. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was the unlucky sap dating her. Larry Butts. My best friend since grade school. Our school had a saying, when something smells, it's usually the Butts. In the 23 years I've known him, it's usually been true. He has a knack for getting himself in trouble. One thing I can say, though, it's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck. But I know better than anyone that he's a good guy at heart. That and I own one, which is why I took the case. To clear his name. And that's just what I'm gonna do. Got a cat playing with something down there. I have no idea. It's six. She's down there. She's got something. I don't know. Our, the cat that jumped up is the one named after a Phoenix Wright character. Uh-huh. Christoph. The quarter's going fast in front of fire. That's the judge voice. Yeah, that's the judge voice. <laughs> the prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The um, defense is ready, Your Honor. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing at my own stupid voice. <laughs> yes, Your Honor. I'm, um, a little nervous. Now, could that burn this child will decide to hide up the quiet? Murdered with a serious time for your quiet sake? I hope you can take all your knots. Thank, thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> it's a wonder any of them can understand him. That's like he's just, uh, th thank you? Yeah. Mr. Wright, there were no circumstances. I think we should have a cash card right in your readiness. Rude. Yes, Your Honor. Gulp. <laughs> Hand shaking. Eyesight fading. Mom spaghetti. <laughs> the tech will consist of a few simple questions. I don't know, query, I could type it. I don't remember this step in, in common court. Yeah, the part where we test you to see if you're a real lawyer. Yeah. Price right to defend it in that case. Larry Butts. Larry Butts. Larry Butts. The defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. We should at least know that much. I think the judge just doesn't want to say he doesn't know what the fuck's going on. So he's like, <laughs> he's like testing I'm you. Test you. Uh, who's this about again? Let's keep your butts about the other one. Fine. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me, what's the victim's name? <laughs> I know this one. Glad I read the case report cover to cover so many times. It's... wait. Uh-oh. <laughs> no, no way, I forgot, I'm drawing a total blank here. Phoenix, are you absolutely sure you're up to this? <laughs> that face. I know. You don't even know the victim's name? Uh, uh, the victim, of course. I know the victim's name. I, um, just forgot. Temporarily. I think I feel a migraine coming on. Look, the defendant's name is listed in the court record. Just touch the court record button to check it at any time, okay? Remember to check it often. Do it for me, please. I'm begging you. I've seen one of your first court cases, and I know how nervous you were at the beginning, madam. That's how you're right, huh? Or what's that victim in that case? Court record. Is it attorney's <laughs> badge? Yeah, I, I present my attorney's badge. Uh, okay, so Cindy's autopsy report, receipt from EFA, time of death, cause of death. 
about Cindy something or other. Yeah. And then I think we can go to Profiles, Mia Fey, Larry Butts, Cindy, Cindy Stone. Stone. Some nice hair. I like the bangs coming in at a point. 22 years old. A victim in this case. The victim in this case. A model. She lived apart in an apartment by herself. I still never understand how Larry gets like these rich models and shit. As girlfriends. As girlfriends. I just over here thinking about how must how nice it must be to have an apartment by yourself. Yeah, fuck off. <laughs> is it is it him? He did. He's the victim. <laughs> he murdered himself. I mean, like in a sense, he's sort of the victim. Cindy Stone. Cinder block. <laughs> Cinder rally. Um, the victim's name is Cindy Stone. Crap! I was coming. What was the cut of that? She died because she was. Too beautiful. <laughs> uh, Too pure for this world. Hit with the blunt object, I believe, is what it was. Uh, yeah. Yep. Strangled. Because I remember what the murder weapon is. She was struck once by a blunt object. Yeah, more like she was hitting that blunt. That too. A rock. A rock for all my questions. I see no reason why we should have to Yeah, just don't let Larry talk. You think much more of a rock, Mr. Wright. But for you. Okay, just don't let Larry talk. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Your Honor. Because I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. He's so cute. <laughs> wow, God. Well, a question for the prosecution. What's the time? Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> That's a good voice, too. Yes. I remember my cover of the wreck of my truck when I brought the object. What do I find her on court on that object was? The murder weapon was the statue of the thinker. It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. See, I told you you were coming for the good voice acting. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Of course, I'm talking again. I'm running my chest. I'm laughing. It's a good voice. <laughs> Statue added to the court record. I'm laughing because it's a funny voice. Type weapons. Submitted as evidence by Prosecutor Payne. More like this prosecutor is a pain. That's for sure. Right. Be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during the trial. That evidence is the only ammunition you have in court. Touch the court record button to check on the court record frequently. The prosecution calls the defendant, Mr. Butts, to the stand. What did I just say? Don't yeah. let him talk. He just isn't going to go well. Um, um, Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that helps your help your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate. How about the fact that he was screaming he was guilty? Yes. Yeah. Uh-oh. Larry gets excited easily. This should could be bad. <laughs> this should be bad. <laughs> That's accurate. <laughs> Ahem. Mr. Butts, is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? Hey, watch it, buddy. We were, we, we were great together. We were Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra and Mark Antony. They all die. I wasn't dumped. She just wasn't taking my phone calls or seeing me. Ever. His <laughs> cheek is going. What's it to you anyway? Mr. Butts, what you describe is generally what we mean by dumped. In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing other men. She had just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. What do you mean, one of them? Lies. All of it. Lies. I don't believe a word of it. Your Honor, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. Passport added to the court record. Mm. <laughs> Sounded like Yoda. Mm. <laughs> Indeed, appears she. Right. Yeah, appears she was returned the day before the murder. Dude, no way. The victim was a model, but she did not have a large income. It appears like she had several sugar daddies. I need that life. Right? Daddies? Sugar? Yes, older men 
man who gave her money and gifts. She took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. Dude. We can clearly see what kind of a woman this Miss Stone was. A successful one? <laughs> if men want to give her money, then more power to her. Right. Tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think of her now? Right? I don't think you want to let him ask for you to want... I don't think you wanted to answer that question. Yeah, Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Should I... Probably stop him. Yeah, I'm gonna say, we, as they were telling us not to let him answer that one, so let's... My client had no idea the victim was seeing other men. That question is irrelevant to this case. Oof. That's the noise I make when I wince. Mm. <laughs> it's kind of a poop noise. Dude, Nick, what do you mean irrelevant? That cheating she dog. She dog? I think we know what you mean by that. <laughs> <laughs> Cheat bitch. There you go. It's like a PG 13 game or something. I know. Like. I think it was like not E for everyone, but whatever the next step up is. Yeah. I'm gonna die. I'm just gonna drop dead. Yeah, and when I meet her in the afterlife, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. I believe the accused motive is clear to everyone. Yes, quite. Oh boy, this is not looking good. That's quite the next question. You were you went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? Gulp. Well, did you or did you not? <laughs> well, maybe I did, maybe I didn't. <laughs> maybe you did with what? <laughs> uh oh, he went. <laughs> what do I do? Have him answer honestly, stop him from answering. Ugh. Um, I would say have him answer honestly, because yeah. if, he's, if he's innocent, he's innocent. Yeah, well, and you are under penalty of law, sir. Yeah. Tell the tr truth. I know, I'll send him a signal. Oh, God. <laughs> Tell the truth. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I was there. I went. They should move their heads left and right. Wow, Mr. Box. Do chill. She wasn't home, man. So, like, I didn't see her. Your Honor, the defendant is lying. Lying? The prosecution would like to call a witness who can prove Mr. Butts is lying. Well, that's a surprise matter. Oh, my God, my God. The man who found the victim's body. Just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the defendant fleeing from the scene of the crime. <laughs> Yes, Your Honor. This is bad. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Saw it to the stand. You look trustworthy. Yeah. Mr. Sawit, you sell newspaper subscriptions. Is this correct? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know how to do voices. Yeah, don't worry about it. Oh, oh yes. Newspapers, yes. Whatever I do Sir, I can't understand you anyway. Break that cup what we call the day of the murder. Witness testimony. I was going door to door selling some. Door to door. Door to door. He's like <laughs> Minnesotan. Oh, yeah, I was going door to door. <laughs> selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman not moving, dead. <laughs> I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I 
I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. The man who ran was, without a doubt, the defendant sitting right over there. Hmm. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? He did. He said he was there. Yeah. I can't defend you against a testimony like that. It's a red family. Why was it supposed to be Mr. Popper? Okay. Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Are the phones supposed to work during the blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. You can tell this, like, takes place in, like, the past. <laughs> yeah. Cordless phones and stuff. The house phones. That's true. He, this guy doesn't have a cell phone. The phone that Mr. Slot used was one of those. Your Honor, I have a record of the blackout for your perusal. Don't use big words on the judge. He's easily confused. I don't what tell me what you want. Blackout record added to the court record. Is that like how much I've been drinking this week? Yeah. Blackout record daily. <laughs> Just kidding, I don't drink. Wow. Yes, er, yes, Your Honor. You might be good, my what? Cross-examination, Your Honor? Phoenix, you went to law school. <laughs> what are you, a cross-examination? You mean we don't just come in and people say words and we leave? All right, right. This is it. The real deal. All right, right. All right, right. Uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? For fuck's sake. <laughs> like, again. <laughs> I feel like law school has to be at least, like, four years long like I, I feel like i think it's a little longer than that um i have a friend who is actually a lawyer yeah she started out at my first college with us and then she went into law after doing her general studies she was the leader of our anime club oh there you go she i don't know if she follows the channel if you do hi sarah uh, hi sarah if she doesn't yeah. then tell her to yeah if you don't sarah you better start watching the fucking yeah, channel fuck right you, now sarah just kidding um <clears throat> Why, you exposed the lies in the testimony the witness just gave. Is this how law is, Sarah? Yeah. <laughs> Do you get your court record? Yeah. Lies? <laughs> what? He was lying? Oh my god, Phoenix. Your client is innocent, right? Then that witness must have lied in his testimony. Or is your client really guilty? How do I prove he's not? You hold the key. It's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find contradictions between the court record and the witness's testimony. Then, once you've found the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the witness's face. Um, okay. Touch the court record button and point out the contradictions in the testimony. Like, he's been with her office for a little while he should even know this part he's certainly seen her in action it's not like this is his first time ever being in the courtroom i would know it's just like the first time he's been the lead attorney on mm -hmm. a case so we're just going door to door um hold it. hold it isn't a man leaving an apartment a common sight i find it odd you would take notice of him er. <laughs> I don't know. He just seemed strange to me, that's all. Like he was mad and yet frightened at the same time. Oh, was he? Just like a criminal fleeing the scene of a crime. Burp. The defense requests the witness refrain from conjecture. Of course. What the witness means is that the man he saw looked suspicious. So, what happened next? Next, Kristoff started trying to knock the mic over. <laughs> our kitty. Uh, must be in a hurry. Half open, you say? Yes, yes, the door was open halfway, yes. I watched for a moment, but no one came close to the door. That's odd in a big city like this, I thought. I see. And what happened next? Thinking it strange, he looked inside the apartment. What gave you the idea to do that? 
Well, the door was half open, you see. Isn't it only human to want to peek? We climb mountains because they are there. It's the same thing. Truer words have never been spoken. Anyone would look inside. Hmm. Why did Payne cut him off so quickly? So you looked into the apartment. What happened then? I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving, dead. Bam! Are you sure she was dead? But, well, no, I guess I wasn't. But she wasn't moving at all, and there was blood everywhere. I guess that would look fatal to anyone. Very well, what happened next? Very well! Quailed in fright. So you didn't touch anything in the apartment? Um, yes. I mean, no. Nothing. Okay, what happened next? Called the police immediately. You thought to call the police? Does that mean you didn't actually call them? Just thought about it and then left. Please, please, listen to the rest of the testimony. You thought to call the police? What happened next? apartment wasn't working. The phone in her apartment wasn't working? Yes, I mean, no. No, it wasn't. Right. But you said you didn't go into the apartment. Or did you? Oh, oh with that, I can explain that. There was a cordless phone on a shelf in the entranceway. I reached inside and tried using that to call. And that phone wasn't working, correct? What happened next? Went to the nearby park and found a public phone. Do, like, do public phones still exist? They do still exist. Do they? Yeah, just rarely. Why use a public phone? Because we don't have cell phones yet. <laughs> well, you see, I don't have a cell phone. And being in the middle of the afternoon, there was no answer at the nearby apartments. Alright, what time did you call again? When I'm rolling out of bed. 1 p.m. Are you certain? Yes, absolutely. Hmm, he seems really confident. 1 p.m.? Right, doesn't that seem strange to you? Present some evidence to contradict him. Alright. I wonder if the blackout record says. <clears throat> um. I think this is it, because the oh, time the of death was between... Um, you are taking too much room here, bud. He just, like, stretches further and further. I um, know, he, like, pushes me more and more off of our recording space. <laughs> I think it's this one, because the time of death is 4 to 5 p.m. Okay. You know yep. you're right when the music stops. Yeah. You found the body at 1 p.m., you're sure? Yes, it was 1 p.m., for certain. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes the time of death at sometime after 4 p.m. There was nobody to, uh, no body <laughs> to find at 1 p.m. How do you explain this three hour gap? You shimmy a little faster. Yeah, that's how you do it. Oh, that. Oh, uh. This is trivial. The witness nearly forgot the time. I find that hard to remember. Why were you so certain that you found the body at one p.m.? I, I mean, well, I. Gee, that's a really good question. Great job, right? Way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point out the contradictions. Lies always beget more lies. See through one, and their whole story falls apart. Wait, I remember now. I'm sure he would. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. 
there was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a taped program. That's why I thought it was 1 p.m. Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. Hmm, sounds legit. Can't find any holes in that one. Oh no, nothing's wrong with that testimony at all. Mm, I swear, you had a boy saying the time on a tape program. But that's right. You might cross a time and go with Next time. Next time. But thank you guys all for joining us for the first episode of Phoenix Right. I'm so excited to be doing this one. It's probably going to be a longer series because it's well, a, yeah, it's a, it takes a while. It's a big game. It's, it's a little bit of a slog. I'm so excited because I really, really, really love this game, and it's always exciting to get back into it. Uh, but if you also are enjoying it, make sure that you subscribe so that as more pieces of it come out, you'll be the first to know about them. If you like the video, go ahead and like the video and check the links down to our coffee button. But until next time, objection. Bye. <laughs>